Good evening class and welcome to lesson 3.10, Patterns with Decimals. We'll begin by taking a look at our essential question. How can you use addition or subtraction to describe a pattern or create a sequence with decimals? So let's begin by taking a look at our Unlock the Problem. A state park rents canoes for guests to use at the lake. It costs $5 to rent a canoe for one hour, $6.75 for two hours, $8.50 for three hours, and $10.25 for four hours. If this pattern continues, how much should it cost Jason to rent a canoe for seven hours? A sequence is an ordered list of numbers. A term is each number in a sequence. You can find the pattern in a sequence by comparing one term with the next term. So, step one says to write the terms you know in a sequence. Then look for a pattern by finding the difference from one term in the sequence to the next. So if we look back up at our word problem, we see that it costs $5 to rent a canoe for one hour, $6.75 for two hours, $8.50 for three hours, and $10.25 for four hours. So if we come down to our problem, we see that the first hour is $5, $6.75 for two hours, $8.50 for three hours, and $10.25 for four hours. So we have to look at the difference between each term, and these are terms. These are the numbers in the sequence, and this entire piece here is what's known as the sequence. So if we go and sub start subtracting, we see that they did the 675 minus 5 is the plus $1.75. So then we have to look at the difference between this term and this term. So that would be 850 minus 675. Okay, we cannot do 0 minus 5, so we're going to have to borrow. That makes that a 4. 10, 10 minus 5 is 5. Again, we cannot do 4 minus 7, so we have to borrow. 14 minus 7 is 7, and 7 minus 6 is 1. And we see that the difference between 850 and 675 is $1.75. And now, just to make sure, we look at the difference between our 1025 and our 850. So again, 1025 minus 850. 5 minus 0 is 5. We cannot do 2 minus 5, so we have to borrow. We have to borrow all the way across. 12 minus 5 is 7. 9 minus 8 is 1. And again, we see our difference is $1.75. So now step 2 says to write a rule that describes the pattern in the sequence. Our rule would be, and if you notice, we're going up by $1.75 with each term. So our rule would be add $1.75. Now remember, we're not done with our word problem because it asks how much should it cost Jason to rent a canoe for seven hours? So now we have to extend the sequence to solve the problem. Five then to 675, 850, 1025. So now if we take 1025 and add $1.75, that is going to give us 12. And then if we take 12 and add $1.75, that's going to give us 1375. And if we take 1375 and add $1.75, that is going to give us $15.50. So it should cost $15.50 to rent a canoe for seven hours. So what observation can you make about the pattern in the sequence that will help you write a rule? Well, one of the possible answers is the terms are increasing by the same amount, so the rule includes addition. Now let's take the next example. It says to write a rule for the pattern in the sequence, then find the unknown terms in the sequence. And we have 29 and 6 tenths, 
28 and 3 tenths, 27, 25 and 7 tenths. So what is our next rule? Or what is our next three in our pattern? So step one says look at the first few terms in the sequence. And that would be 29 and 6 tenths, 28 and 3 tenths, 27 and 25 and 7 tenths. Now we have to think, is the sequence increasing or decreasing from one term to the next? And we see 29, 28, 27, so therefore we know that it is decreasing. Step two says to write a rule that describes the pattern in the sequence. What operation can be used to describe a sequence that increases? Well, if our, if our pattern is going up like it was in our last problem, then the operation we would be used would be addition. Then it asks, what operation can be used to describe a sequence that decreases, which is like the one that we have here? Well, if it's decreasing, we are going to use subtraction in our rule. So now, remember, in order to find the rule, we have to take our first couple of terms and work with them. So 29.6 minus 28 and 3 tenths gives us, remember we have to keep our decimal aligned straight. 6 minus 3 is 3, 9 minus 8 is 1, and that gives us 1 and 3 tenths. Now we don't just want to jump out there because sometimes they give crazy patterns in these sequences. So let's check between 28 and 3 tenths and our 27. Remember we add a 0 to keep our decimals aligned. 3, 8 minus 7 is 1. And we see that our difference is the same in both our terms. So our rule then would be to subtract 1 and 3 tenths. Now it says to use your rule to find the unknown terms, then complete the sequence above. So now we just keep subtracting our 1 and 3 tenths. So our next value would be 24 and 4 tenths. And our next one would be 23 and 1 tenth. And our next one would be 21 and 8 tenths. Now, it says to explain how you know whether your rule for a sequence would involve addition or subtraction. Well, if it is increasing, if our sequence is going up in numbers or terms, we would use addition. If our sequence is going down in terms, like our example up here, then we would use subtraction. Now, it says to write a rule for the sequence, then find the unknown terms. Well, we have to look at our terms in order to know if we're increasing or decreasing. And we go 65 and 9 tenths, 65 and 3 tenths. Well, since we know 9 tenths is greater than 3 tenths, we see that we are decreasing. So right away, we know that part of our rule is going to be subtract because we are decreasing. And now we look for the different values between the terms and we get 65, I'm sorry about that guys, 65 and 9 tenths minus 65 and 3 tenths. And we see that when keeping our decimals aligned, 9 minus 3 is 6, 0, 0. So, so far we know it's 6 tenths, but let's look at a couple more values. Let's look at 64 and 1 tenths minus 63 and 5 tenths to see if we get the same thing. We have to keep our decimals aligned and we know that we can't do 1 minus 5 so we do have to borrow. 11 minus 5 is 6 and we see that our two differences between terms is the exact same with 6 tenths. So it's going to be subtract oops, 6 tenths. Okay. Make sure my decimal shows up there. Right? <clears throat> now the next one says 
to write the first four terms of the sequence. And our rule says start at 35 hundredths. So since it says to start at 35 hundredths, we know that our first term is going to be 35 hundredths. And then it says to add 15 hundredths. So we have to take our 35 hundredths and add 15 hundredths to get our second term. And 5 and 5 is 10, carry our 1, 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Keep our decimals aligned since we are adding, so we know our next term is 5 tenths or 50 hundredths. Now we have to take that and add our 15 hundredths to it. So let's add our 15 hundredths. 0 plus 5 is 5, 5 plus 1 is 6. Keep our decimals aligned so that we know our third term is going to be 65 hundredths. And then we take our 65 hundredths and we add 15 hundredths to it. 10, okay, 6, 7, 8. We make sure we keep our decimals aligned since we are adding. And that gives us 8 tenths or 80 hundredths. You can say it either one. You can either leave the zero or we can drop the zero at the very end of the decimal. All right, guys, well, that's it for today's lesson. I will see you in class tomorrow. My password for today is going to be tree. Make sure you record it and bring it with you to class tomorrow as proof that you watched the video. And I'll see you then.